Hi guys, why is the strength only 42 so far? I'm just waiting for more people to join. Hi, good evening, Tanzila. Good evening, Somnath. Uh, I'll just wait for a few more minutes then. Okay. Hi everyone. I think we'll start the class, even though uh, not everybody is there yet. That's okay. Let me start sharing my screen. Okay. We'll open up VS Code as usual. And uh, Newton React app. This was the last thing that we did on that day, now. So if you remember, the the thing that we discussed was about this use effect cut cleanup, how that works. So I hope you guys have done enough um, enough revision on that because that's a pretty important topic. Okay. So now we'll move on to the next topic, which is within use effect, how can we actually make API calls? Okay, so let's move to that. I'll remove all the current code that we have. I'll remove this as well. So let's say that I have an API endpoint, which is something like this. Uh, JSON placeholder. This, this is a website which basically has a lot of like uh, stuff that we can do. We had React module contest yesterday. Uh, what was the React module contest? You guys have a link for that? You guys have any link? Take care. So guys, uh, during our JavaScript sessions, you have seen how we can make API calls, right? For that, what you basically need is an API endpoint like this. This is an API endpoint which backend will manage. Uh, when you hit this API endpoint, basically you'll get back this data. Okay, this is basically an object which has a few properties in it. Now, what I want to do is within my app, I want to make an API call to this API. I want to get back this data and I want to display this data on my UI right now. Okay, I want to display, let's say, just the title 
uh, from the API call. Okay. Now, if you think about this, uh, the way we first of all make an API call is uh, see API call again is part of the side effect, right? So because uh, we basically are are interacting with an excellent system here. You know, we can uh, React. I mean, the, the API call doesn't happen within React. We actually are making an API call to an external server. <coughs> It is somewhere outside there, and we need to make the API call. We need to interact with that system, and then backend gives us back some data. Okay, so that's how we ultimately interact with an API. Now, every API call is basically what we call as a side effect again. And when we have a side effect, we have to always rely on on using use effect. Okay, because uh, use effect is a perfect place for you to make API calls because first of all, that's a side effect. But also, let me tell you about one more. Uh, one more reason for that, okay. So let's say that I create a function here called as um, let's call this as user data, okay, because it has a user ID here. Let's say a const get um, function get user data. Now this function can that I want to write some fetch call, okay. I want to fetch this data, and this is the API endpoint. I want to get this data here. The way I can do this is again, guys. So, um, what function do we use to make an API call in JavaScript? Okay, uh, yeah, we use the fetch, right? So, the so fetch is the main function which is provided by default in every browser, uh, with the help of which we can make an API call. Now, we can either use the promise syntax or we can use the async await syntax. We'll use both of them. Okay, uh, we'll start the traditional. Uh, approach which is using the promise based approach, which is use the fetch function. But then you have to provide the URL first of all. I'll directly copy this URL and I'll paste it like this within double quotes or single quotes. Okay, now this will basically make the API call. Uh, but then what does this return to us, guys? What does the fetch function return to us? So it returns to us the promise again. So one second, guys. Yeah, guys. So, like I was saying. Uh... When we make this fetch call, what we get back is basically a promise. Now, what do we do with the promise? Now, what kind of functions can we add on top of a promise? If we want to get the resolved value of a promise, what do we do? Is there a way we can get the resolved value of a promise? Await is one way, but now I'm talking about the promise syntax. So, uh, so dot then is the way we can do that, right? So. If you use a dot then, basically, remember that this returns to uh, <clears throat> this thing returns to your promise, and then we do a dot then on top of it, okay? And dot then ke under we give a call back here, all right? What we get back within the dot then is basically the resolved promise ka value, right? Okay, whatever is the resolved value. Of this promise, that's what we get back here. Yahapar basically what we get back is the response. Okay. And Yahapar, what we end up doing is we return response.json. The reason we do this is again, what does response.json return to us? Yeah, so Divya is correct. Response.json returns to the new promise again. Guys, if you remember, we had gone through this extensive example that day uh, when I was teaching on promises. And I would I would suggest you to uh, go through that video again because Vahapar, we did a very deep dive on promises, watch it and all of those things. Okay, so just go through the video again. Now response.json again returns to the new promise. And uh, but again you have to remember that dot then will always return to your promise again. Dot then itself returns to your promise, 
लेकिन उस प्रॉमिस का वैल्यू क्या होगा दैट डिपेंड्स ऑन वॉट यू रिटर्निंग हियर ठीक है मी रिपीट दैट सी डॉट देन इट सेल्फ विल रिटर्न टू योर प्रोमिस ठीक है लेकिन उस प्रोमिस में इफ यू डू अ डॉट देन अगेन यहां पर क्या वैल्यू आएगा दैट डिपेंड्स ऑन वॉट यू रिटर्निंग हियर वॉट एवर इज द लास्ट रिटर्न वैल्यू ऑफ द लास्ट प्रोमिस ना दैट विल बिकम द वैल्यू हियर ना बिकॉज दिस इट सेल्फ इज रिटर्न इन टू योर प्रोमिस ओके अब इस प्रॉमिस का जो रिजोल्व वैल्यू है दैट विल बी द डेटा हियर फाइनली एंड देन आई सिम टू कंसोल ऑफ डेटा Divya is right. Okay, so basically, uh, this dot then ke under whatever data we have here, that depends on what is the previous dot then ka return value. If all of this is confusing, please watch that video. I went in extreme detail, बहुत ही simply मैं uh, explain किया था उसमें. Just go through that again, okay? But if all of you want a revision, I can do that today also. Uh, but we'll see. Okay, so now we have the data here. And just console logging the data. Now, I have I have the function definition here. Let me just call it like this. And for now, I'll just say like switching user data. And now, if I launch this app, we can run dev, and we have the app here. Let's open up a console log. If I refresh again, if you see that we got the actual response here, okay. Now this seems good. Looks like it's definitely working. There's nothing wrong here, and we are and we're not even using use effect so far. But what can be the problem if we use use effect? Now think about this, guys. A lot of times when you go to a certain screen, uh, you want to make that API call only once. Okay, you want to make the API call only once. You want to get that data. You want to show that data on the screen. Like for example, uh, let's say that when you log into a web page, okay, you want to make an API call only once to uh, to get the name of that user, right? Once you have the name of that user, you just show the name there once. Okay, you don't keep making the API call again and again because you know that the result will be the same anyway, right? Lot of times, even if you hit the API call again and again, you get the same result back. In such a case, do you, uh, such a case, do you need to make the API call multiple times? Like my point is, let's say that you have an API, have an API here, and you make the first call. Okay, it's giving you back some response. the response is let's say an object with a uh, user id of 1 okay yeah. now if you again make an make an api call it gives you back the same response again no difference okay let's say you make an api call again you get the same response back again this is very possible i mean uh, so think about stuff like you know if you have some um, i mean there might be some apis which might give you different data but many times most of the apis they return to you the same data no matter how many times you call okay now in such a case it doesn't make sense to keep calling the api call again and again right uh, such a case what you essentially want to do is you want to call the api once and you want to get that data and display it on the ui and then that's it and not call the api again okay if that is what you want uh, then this would be a problem because let's say that now i have some state within my function i want to add the state here Increment on click. I just do a set count of countless one. I want to show 
that uh, down here. So if you see uh, right now, see when I load the app for the first time, what exactly happens is we render the component, which means that we run every single line. So we run this line. This function has been created and we call this function and then it makes the API call and we get the data here. That is fine. If I clear this off now, when I click on the increment button, guys, what do you think would happen? When I click on the increment button, we read into the component, right? Which means that we call the app function again, which means that we run this line of code, we run this line of code. Again, we call the same function, which means that we are making the API call again. So even though the API will not return to you any other data the next time, we still are making the API call. See, if I click on increment, see, we made the API call again. I click on increment again, make the API call again. Now, this is something which you should not do. We should not make so many network calls. We should not make so many API calls, okay? We should be very careful regarding how many times you make an API call and when you make an API call, okay? Be very careful with that. Especially if your user is using a low-end Android device on a 2G network and all of that, uh, you should not be making multiple API calls, okay? And to get rid of this issue, we have to use a use effect hook for this, okay? What I'll do right now is I'll just take this entire thing and within use effect, guys, if there's something I want to do only once, we just have a key bar karna hai, that too after the first render. Yeah, so what should I be doing for that? What should be the second uh, argument here, guys? Yeah, so it should be an empty array like this. Okay. Uh, within this, I'll just paste the same code that I had before, like this. Okay. Uh, now what will happen is, see, I'll I'll relaunch the app. Uh, we've made the call once, that too after the first render. Okay, which means that once we have rendered this for the first time, uh, uh, we have made this API call. I mean, console and uh, <clears throat> data here. Okay. Uh, now, if I click on increment any number of times, it doesn't really matter. Okay, we don't see any more API calls going because we have restricted this API call to happen only once, that to after the first render. Okay, lot of times this is exactly what you would want. Okay, so uh, going forward for your API calls, always use the use effect ka hook. Okay. Any questions so far, guys? <clears throat> so let's proceed now. Uh, the next part I want to talk about is TK. So uh, once we've got this data, mujhe abhi is data ko, I want to show it on my screen right now. So what can I do? How do I show this data on my screen? Basically, just think about something. See, once we get this data here, okay, we need to show this data on the screen. Or agar mujhe show karna hai, so I have to re-render the component, right? Because guys, if you don't uh, re-render the component, the changes will not be shown on the screen. Amit, I'll be talking about async await also. I wanted to show you the different ways you can use the fetch uh, within React. Okay, first we'll use the promise syntax and then we'll proceed with the async await syntax, okay? Uh, so like I was saying regarding the data being shown on the UI, see any change you want to see on the UI, guys, any change you want to see on the UI, it has to always happen with a, uh, with a re-render. Because if React will not actually re-render your, uh, your component, that data will never be uh, uh, will never be shown on the UI. Makes sense? Now keeping this in mind, just ask yourself, like this is where I'm getting the data. And I need to re-render the component and show this data. Okay, so uh, 
what should I be doing? Yes, so basically, we can create a state here. Let's say the use state. And it will basically be an empty object to begin with, or it can even be null. It doesn't really matter because initially, uh, there is no data uh, of the user. So I'll say user data and set user data. Okay. But my point is initially because there is no user data. Because uh, see, in the first render, uh, there is no user to show, right? In such a case, I'll add the that the initial state is null, which means at this point of time, the user data is a null, uh, null value. Okay, and then I come here, and here the user data will be null, obviously. What I want to do here is, in case the user data is null, I can do two things. I can basically do this. I can say if not user data. Then I don't want to show any of this. I I just want to return one H1 saying no user data yet. Okay. If you see here when I relaunch the app, I'm getting no user data yet because this is null. This thing is null here. And uh, we seem to return this one here. Uh, but what I want to do is once we get the data here, I want to set uh, this data inside this state here. So I'll just do set user data of data. Now when I refresh now, you'll see that for a uh, very split second. I'll do one thing. I'll, I'll reduce my network speed so that you'll understand how it uh, shows. Throttling, I'll do a slow 3G. Now we'll refresh the app. It'll take a while, so just hold on. Yeah, so it says no user data yet, and then it shows me this, which means that initially, when there is no data, uh, we return this, and once there is some data, we return this. Okay. Uh, let me refresh this again just so you can see it properly. Yeah, so it says this initially, and then we show this data here. Okay. Yes, yeah, be clear enough. <clears throat> All right. And now what we'll do is um, once we have the user data with us, which is inside the state here, okay. Uh, let's display the user data dot um, it's a title okay so what we can do here is let's say user data dot title let me change this to no throttling the refresh see i get this title here or i can say something like Title will be this. Okay. Right now, because my internet speed is very fast and the API response is very uh, very small, this happens instantly. But there might be cases where the server might be slow, or your internet connection might be slow, or the response might be very heavy. So you might see much more time taken here. Uh, yeah, but this is how you would basically make an API call, guys. Again, the way it works is within our use effect. Uh, because you want to make the API call only once, okay? so you would call the function, and this function gets called. You will fetch, and then you will set the data inside the state. And when the state is not there, which means that in the first render, the user data is null, right? In that case, we simply return this H1 here so that uh, and they see something on the screen which tells them that there is no data yet. 
ठीक है एंड देन वी कैन इवन से दैट या एंड देन विल से दैट वेन अ यूजर डेटा इज नॉट नल विच मीन्स अट देर इज सम डेटा टू शो दैट केस विल शो दिस थिंग योर okay so this is one way of doing it the other way is uh, what a lot of people do is which which i don't like so much is uh, you take this user data and then directly show it like this but it will actually cause an issue it says that cannot read properties of null because what exactly is happening here is see the first time in the first render our user data is null right but here we are saying null dot title so you can never do undefined dot something or null dot something the app will actually crash okay whenever you do a null dot something or undefined dot something it will always crash because a javascript knows that we trying to access a property on null or undefined but that is wrong because null or undefined don't have any properties to access right you can never do null dot something or undefined dot something that will always crash the app you know and this is what you actually see okay and how do we prevent this here guys right now this is throwing the error uh, because user data is null So how do you think we can prevent the error here guys the simplest way is what okay empty string is one good idea but let's say ki mujhe null hi rakhna hai ha so that is one way so basically what vinay is saying is yahan par you can do ki agar user data hai uh, then then render this this is a good uh, yeah so one more way is turn operator which is basically you can do something like this be like false or you can even say null here this is fine this also would work i'll tell you one more way which is using optional chain now do you guys know what optional chaining is Okay, so let's talk about options then because it's something which you would use a lot in React. So let's say that you have an object here which is uh, undefined. Uh, I'm sorry, undefined right now. Okay, the object. Uh, I mean, um, uh, see, you would expect the object to be something like this idea of one, uh, but right now it's undefined. If you try to access the object. Uh, dot let's say id throw this error but object is right now undefined and uh, which means you cannot do undefined dot id you know javascript doesn't like whenever you try to access any properties on null or undefined now this will create an issue because you trying to access the properties of undefined i mean of id or undefined theek okay? hai uh, is this issue understood guys what the issue is ठीक है, so you have a yeah variable here which is undefined basically, ठीक है, अभी undefined dot कुछ नहीं कर सकते हैं because undefined पे कुछ नहीं होगा, लेकिन यहाँ पे you're trying to do undefined dot id, which would throw um, a serious error like this. So there are multiple ways to solve this. One way is you can simply do अगर object है, ठीक है, then do object dot id. This is one way. But the other way is uh, you do a object है तो object to id करो नहीं तो null तो done करो this one more way the other way is use uh, this which you've already seen but if you just want to use object dot id right uh, now what you want to do is in case this is undefined okay 
if you have a feeling that this is undefined, you can use the option chain like this. Uh, okay, so option chain, nothing but using a question mark before the dot here. Okay. Uh, what this will do is in case this is undefined or something, it doesn't even go any further. Uh, this will just return to you undefined. Okay. Let me repeat that. If uh, whatever you have before the question mark is nothing but this thing. If this is undefined, then it doesn't even go any further. It will just return undefined overall. Okay, let me give you more examples of this. Const user is equal to location city Hyderabad, let's say. Normally, you can access like the city by saying user.location.city, and that will return to Hyderabad, right? But let's say that many uh, a city in Kaldia. Or many location kind of nikal diya. Okay. That's an empty object right now. Again, this will result in uh, this problem here. But let me tell you something. <clears throat> Guys, one second. I'm sorry, guys. I had a call. Uh, so I was saying that. Uh, have a problem, can I? See, <clears throat> if you just do user dot location, it's not a problem because user ka jo object hai, that is there. Okay, this thing is there. That is fine. But since location is not there, it will be undefined. Okay, now this is not a crash. Okay, this thing will not crash your app at all. But <clears throat> now, what this? Uh, what is uh, what is this return to us is returning to undefined, right? But if you do user dot location dot something like city or something, you're basically doing undefined dot city, right? So this is a problem again. Okay. This is okay because user ka object exists. Okay. I mean within this object. Location nahi hai, to kya wa hai. We just return undefined. But if you do a dot city on the undefined, this is a problem. This uh, JavaScript will not like. And then it will crash your app with this error. Now, basically, where should we put the question mark? We can put it right here. Because what's happening here is, see, we're saying that if this part is undefined. Okay. Whatever is so left of the question mark, which is this part. If this part is undefined, then it won't even go further because it knows that there's no point of checking city on undefined ka value. And hence, uh, this will simply return uh, the value of undefined. <clears throat> uh, like, it'll simply return a final value. Of undefined overall. Okay. I'll repeat that. Uh, 
one second. I'm just trying to find a better example. Okay, let's say that I have an object like this, an empty object, a user. Okay. Okay. Uh, first of all, you guys tell me ki what is the value. If I simply do user or ID, uh, what will this return to me? Undefined. Because if you're trying to access any property with an object which does not exist, right? It always gives you undefined. This thing is clear, na? Both Himanshu and Tamzila. Okay. Now my point is, if you do a dot of anything else, like let's say like city, this is a problem because we know that this part is undefined. Okay, this part is undefined, which means that we're simply doing undefined dot city. Now JavaScript will not like whenever you try to access any property on the undefined or the null value. Okay. <laughs> Which means that if you do uh, undefined dot something or null dot something, okay, uh, this will always give this error here, okay, and this will not even make your app usable anymore. It's not a simple error. It will not even make your app like usable anymore, okay. Again, that is because like this part here is undefined. Uh, I'm doing undefined dot city. We are breaking the app because we know that there is nothing called city on, on the undefined value. No? Undefined is a simple value. It's like saying like one dot city or something. It doesn't make any sense, right? Because so always make sure that uh, when you have uh, this part here is undefined, okay? Which means you cannot do undefined dot city. Yahata clear again? Okay. Uh, and how to uh, how to get rid of this error? Okay, so one way is uh, you first check if user is there, and only then you go to do user dot id, and if this is there, then uh, then do user dot id dot city. This is a safe way of accessing property. Abhi yaha pa kya ho raha hai ki we are checking if user is there. Okay, user to hai. Take it, which means that we go to this part. Uh, and what about this? is this there? It's not there, which means that we simply return with undefined. It is what we have here. Okay, but imagine if you have, uh, if you want to check for even more properties like user.id.city.name or whatever. Okay. There's a very lengthy way of checking if a nested property exists or not, right? You can't keep adding these things like this. Uh, the better solution for this is use optional chain, which is you take the last thing that. Uh, this is what I actually want. I'm not able to copy this. Why? Shit, what's, what's wrong? What's wrong? Hold on, guys. I'll take this thing. And now, what I'll do is I'll say, see. Uh, User to hai mujhe pata hai, theek hai? So ID tak aa sakta hai, like ID ke baad and not sure. So I'll put an optional chain here. What this means is, see, whatever is there to the left of the question mark, which is this entire thing, okay? And if this entire thing is undefined, uh, this optional chaining operator will simply return undefined overall. Because it will not even proceed and check the other things anymore. It will simply check what is there to the left of the question mark. And because this part is undefined, it will simply return undefined overall. Okay. And the reason I'm adding the question mark here is because I know that user ka object to have. So there's no point of adding it here. Because this part will never be undefined. No. This part will always be this object. But the other things might be a problem. So if I add a question mark here, I'm saying that I know that user is there, uh, but ID can not sure. And hence I'll simply check if the entire thing is undefined or not. And if the entire thing here uh, is undefined, 
அப்படி சிம்பிளி இருக்கு அன்டிஃபைன் ஓவர் ஆல் தட்ஸ் ஆல் ஓகே பட் லெஸ் டு ஒன் மோர் எக்ஸாம்பிள் இஃப் ஐ சே லைக் ஐடி இஸ் தேர் பட் சிட்டி இஸ் நாட் தேர் லெஸ் ஐடி இஸ் தேர் பட் இட்ஸ் லைக் திஸ் நவ் வாட் இஸ் ஹேப்பனிங் ஹியூர் இஸ் லெட்ஸ் யூ அகேன் ஓகே Uh, what does user dot id return to us guys uh, look at the question here properly again what does user dot id return to us does it return undefined an empty object right theek hai uh, what does the user dot id dot city return to us undefined okay Uh, so where do you think i should place the question mark right now after city because i know that the city might or might not be there okay it might break at this point okay uh, wherever you suspect it will break just add the question mark here because you like this is there this is the object and this will give an empty object which is this empty object here but dot city this will be undefined okay uh the question mark se pehle jo bhi hai agar wo undefined hua to uh just simply returns undefined overall without even going and checking what is there to the uh right of this thing okay Are you clear, okay, Tanzila and Himanshu and everybody else? Okay, I'll give you more examples, okay, so that it becomes uh, much more clear. Let's say that if I do const uh, user is equal to undefined, okay. Now, uh, so I want to do like user dot id dot city dot location. Uh, where do you think I should add the question mark? Tanzila check again Guys just look at this like step by step okay let's break this down Okay I'm saying user dot id so first of all what will this part return to us undefined so if i'm doing undefined dot id will this not break so this will break and which means that we have to add it right here no wherever you think ki isse pehle undefined ho sakta hai just add it there like this sorry not like this like uh, this okay what exactly happens now is see question mark se pehle agar ye undefined hua to it doesn't even go any further okay it won't even check what is there to the uh, right of it it simply returns undefined overall okay undefined aa gaya humko okay now uh, one more question what if i do something like uh, like this now we should add the uh, option operator perfect okay let's look at this now so if i'm going to add this here uh what will user return to us guys i wait hold on i'm not changed the question yet i'm sorry uh, so user is the empty object okay then we have no problem accessing it here okay uh what about user dot id what will that return to us okay but guys yahan tak will the app break will the app break because of this no right it always i mean if you simply do user dot id it doesn't break it just gives you back undefined it is fine but because this is undefined to do undefined dot city this will obviously break right that's why give a question mark here 
Again, what this means is, the question mark se pehle, whatever you have here, um, if this is undefined, we don't even check what is there to the right of it. We simply return undefined overall. Now, guys, I'll tell you one more uh, interesting thing, OK? Uh, there is no limit to the number of times you can use the optional chaining operator within one, uh, one thing here, which means that I can actually do this. Nothing stopping me from doing this. This is 100% totally valid. In fact, you will see people doing this a lot because they don't want to, uh, I mean, like trust any part of the object. They're like, you know, ye, uh, this thing might break anywhere. Okay. A backend might send even null here. Doesn't really matter. You know? They can send anything they want. Okay. But if you do this, na, it'll always work. Because you're checking at every single point here. Okay? See, um, whether to use it or not, I'll leave it up to you. There is nothing wrong if you use it like this. It's to totally fine. But always think about what kind of object you're getting. If you're 100% sure that it might be null in the beginning also, because then I just said to use this. Or if you think that might break at the ID, use it only here. Or use it only here like that. It's totally up to you. Okay. Now what I want to do is if I uh, I'm saying as a message, okay. Agar user nahi hai, then I'll simply message like hey. What will this message ka variable right now contain? What will this message ka variable contain right now? Why will it contain a boolean? Guys, come on, think, think, think. Why would it be a boolean or undefined? Yes, so Ganesh is right. It'll simply return hey to you. Because see, what does the or operator do? If you have a false or or a, what happens here? The or operator will simply return whatever to the right of it. Again, left side pe usko truthy value nahi mila, no problem. It simply go to the right side and return that na. Guys, this is the thing, right? You have where somebody is asking for. I think it's my mistake. Okay. Guys, don't forget this thing which I taught multiple times. Like left side or our right side. Just think of it like that. See, doesn't, I mean, there's no rule that our operator must return to your Boolean. There's no rule like that. It depends on what is there to the left side, what is there to the right side. Depending on those values there, those will be returned. There is no absolutely no rule that the uh, the or operator or the and operator must turn a boolean. There's no rule like that, okay? Okay, so what is the rule here? So if left side is falsy, if this is falsy, then what happens? Because the or operator is very optimistic, even if this is falsy, it expects that right side might be truthy, and hence it, uh, it just returns the right side. Joby, whatever you have here is simply returned. Whatever the value is, it might be Boolean, it might be a string, number, undefined object, doesn't matter. It simply returns the value, that's it. Okay? What if this thing is truthy? If it's truthy, then all of it is very happy already. It won't even go to the right side. It simply returns the left side for you. That's it. Okay. What about the AND operator? Left side, AND, and right side. First of all, is there a rule that the AND operator must return a Boolean value? 
hell no okay there's no rule as such now think about this if the left side is uh, it's true t then what does it return double ampersand will go to the right side only if the left side is true t and hence it simply returns to you what Whatever is the right side, right side पे कुछ भी हो सकता है. It can be a string, a null, undefined, false, true, uh, object, function. It can be anything. It simply returns that to you. That's it. Only returns that. Now same thing with this also. What happens if this is like falsey? This is falsey. Double ampersand is very strict. It simply return to you what it is there to the left side. That's it. Doesn't care. that the right side might have been truthy doesn't matter uh left side will be returned that's it now think about this here what will the value of this expression be guys what will this result in guys again why will this return false i'm talking only about this part just this part i'm not talking about this entire thing just this part what will be the answer it will be undefined right why is it undefined because yahan par null dot id <coughs> the question mark here will check if the left side part is undefined or null okay and if it is undefined or null it won't even go to the rest of the properties it simply returns to you undefined okay which means that this part is undefined and doing basically undefined or or hey now we have a falsey value this is falsey value right so what happens now doesn't matter if this is falsey the or operator might still believe that there might be truth value to the right side so it simply returns this value to us we get message here okay is this part is clear Okay, now if you check at this code that I wrote here, what did I do here? See, I can simply do. Ah, uh, now, ah, uh, you guys tell me. Ah, uh, initially user data can be null, okay, but ah uh, later on user data will have some value called title, so I want to use this. But in the first render, what is the value of user data? In the first render, it is null, okay. so null dot title will it will it cause any error or not i'm asking will the null dot title will it cause any error or not will it give any error or not it will right so how do i solve this issue right now yeah yeah exactly so i i add the question mark right here now what happens is in case the left side of it is null or undefined the uh, the question mark here will not even check what is there here it simply return undefined and uh, within your j6 expressions you can definitely add undefined that's not a problem at all See, if i just do this now it won't cause an issue anymore okay there's no errors anymore just that it not print anything here okay but what i want is in case uh, i mean in the first render uh, when this is still not there i want to say loading you okay, now we get very quick but i hope you can see the loading part here does it make sense guys Okay, the uh, the reason I spoke about option chaining is because you'll be using that a lot in your real world projects also. Okay. Okay. Uh, so if this is clear, then we'll move on, guys. Okay. Uh, now the next thing we'll move on to is uh, wait. First of all, let me add this to GitHub just.
All right. Now what we'll do is see uh, we have written this code in the form of this, uh, the promise syntax. Let's convert this to async await. Very simple. Uh, first of all, again, so what does this uh, what does the fetch return to us? A promise. So when you have a promise, right? We can await on it, but we can use the await keyword only if the function it is present inside is an async function, right? Let's kind of this to an async function. Let's await it here. What does this await of this fetch return to us? When you await on a promise, right? And whatever the promise is being resolved to, that will be returned here, which is here by the response. Because remember that when you do a fetch, <clears throat> a fetch dot then, us then ke under uh, jo bhi humko milta hai, that is response, right? That's what we got here. Now, uh, next I'll do, I'll do like response dot face on. What does this return to us again? Returns to us a promise, which will await on top of it. Uh, when you await on a promise like this, and the response to JSON again returns to us the actual data. Okay, uh, this promise it resolves to the actual data that we get here. Okay, now I'll simply do set user data of of this data. You know, uh, so let me change this time. I'll change this to uh, maybe ID this time. Okay, title one. Okay, so this is how we can do it using the async await call. Now, if you think about this, guys, or uh, let me just I'll just write it like this using async and await. I'll copy and paste it in the, in the GitHub list. Cool. So we have this ready. Our next thing what I want to talk about is see uh, if you look at this now, uh, this functions, this existence jo hai, wo sirf is function call ke liye hai na. Like we are not using this function anywhere else outside this use effect, right? We are creating it only once, and you and we're calling it immediately. We are not using or calling this function anywhere else apart from this place. Now, guys, I, see, I spoke to you about one type of function, which we can use if, um, if we want to create and call the function only once, and then right then and there. Exactly. What is an ify here? See, if you remember ifs, guys. Let's say that all I want to do is I want to have a function called as greet here. And this function greet, it simply uh, maybe just console logs. Welcome or something. Okay. So I've created the function here now. Which is called call karna hai. So there are two things to keep in mind, guys. Okay. First thing here is. I have called this function as soon as uh, as soon as I've created it. Meaning, yahi pa create karke, I have called it. This is the first thing. The second thing here is, uh, this is the only place where I'm calling this function. I'm not going to call this function anywhere else throughout my file. These two things are important to know, guys. The first thing here is. I'm calling the function as soon as I'm creating it. There's nothing in between. And the second thing is, I'm calling this function only once right here and nowhere else. Okay. When both of these conditions are met, only then use an ify. What is the full form of an ify, by the way? It's immediately invoked function expressions. Okay. The name itself is saying you immediately invoke this function. The way you can do it is instead of doing this, 
I'll wrap this with a parenthesis. I call it like this. That's it. We do this because we are not going to be using this function anywhere else through the entire file. And because this is an iffy, right? I don't even need the name of the function here, guys. It can just be this. Okay. Yahatak, is it clear again? Uh, last thing is what if I want to use an arrow function here? I can do it like this. Use an arrow function. This is even more concise and shorter code, right? What if I want to use an async arrow function here? I can, I can just do this. Okay. We use the same thing here right now. So I don't have to call the function like this. I'll simply do this. Okay. Your first thing is because this is an iffy, I don't need to have a name like this. I'll simply remove the name. Okay. Next. Uh, what if I want to turn this into an async function? I'll remove the function keyword and I simply do this. Okay. See, I really like this pattern because um, this function is going to be called anyway only once and that too uh, right after it's been defined. And hence, I simply prefer to use this technique. Okay. I'm just going to add this to GitHub just as well. Like this, okay? Okay. Uh, before we take a break, it will be required, Ganesh. It will be required because if you add this also the user effect now, Again, the same problem, right? This function, I mean, we keep calling this function on every render, which is not what we want. Is that clear? It'll clear for the previous render, but near render may uh, it'll be created again now. See, every render main, you'll be creating this function and calling it. You'll be creating this function and calling it. We don't want that to happen. That's why. Okay. Okay. Uh, so is, if there are no more questions, I'll take a small break. Then it's 10, 9, and see you at 10, 20, guys. Okay.
Hi guys, let's continue the class. ठीक है. So this is what we spoke about last. अभी next क्या करते हैं ना? Uh, I'll tell you like in in a real world project how we usually uh, make an API call and all of that. If you look at normal websites, what happens is uh, we show them a loading indicator first. Okay, so load होता रहता है. Once the data is ready, we show the data here. Okay. And in case the uh, uh, the API responds with some error, okay, we show that error also here, right? Let's do that this time. First of all, I'll remove all of this. I'll, uh, we don't need to count all of these things anymore. We, let's remove this also. Is up, kuch nikal. We start from scratch, ठीक है? Let's take another API endpoint. Um, What shall we take? Uh, we'll take this users. Okay, this users endpoint is giving us back an array of objects, guys. Uh, when we have an array of objects here, how do we like return a UI? What do we do to show, let's say, different things of the array within the UI? As you can hear me now. Yeah, I'm saying when you have an array of items, how would you show them on the UI? You would just map over them, right? You would use dot map, correct? So that's what we'll do. So uh, this is uh, what we have right now. Now what I want to do is, I want to first of all make an API call, and while the API call is in progress, I want to show them a loader. Okay. Uh, once the API call is successful, I'll show the actual data on the UI. Okay, that's what we'll do. Now I want to show a loader, <clears throat> and uh, let's get it from Google itself. Let's say like CSS loaders, okay? And uh, maybe let's go to this website. It has a lot of loaders here. Uh, yeah, this thing seems to be interesting. Wait, wait, hold. On. Let's see some other things. Yeah, <clears throat> which one do you like, guys? Uh, I think I like this. I'll just go with this simple thing. So they are saying we have to give this HTML, and this is the CSS, very simple CSS. So I'll let's create a separate component for this because a lot of times what you would be doing is uh, you would have a loader component which will contains the HTML and CSS only for that. So what I'll do is I'll copy this thing. I'll create a separate uh, let's say components called folder like this. I'll create a folder called as loader. यहाँ पर आई विल डू लोडर डॉट जे एस एक्स एंड यहाँ पर आई विल एड दिस वन बट वेन टू ग्रेट ए कॉम्पन फॉर दिस वॉज ए लोडर एंड सिंपली रिटर्न दिस दिस पैन लाइट शो ठीक है दैट्स ऑल वी नीड फॉर नाउ आई विल ऑल्सो डू एक्सपोर्ट फॉर डिफॉल्ट लोडर ठीक है इज ऑल वी हैव सो फार इज अ सिंपल कॉम्पन कॉल लोडर इज रिटर्न इन दिस पैन थिंग क्लास ऑफ लोडर अभी इस पैन को स्टाइल्स एड करने के लिए आई क्रिएट स्टाइल्स डॉट सी एस एस यहां पर आई कॉपी ऑल ऑफ दिस थिंग्स पेस्ट इट लाइक दिस अब वी हैव द स्टाइल्स डॉट सी एस एस का फाइल वी हैव लोडर एज वेल बट हाउ डू वी लिंक दम बोथ टू इम्पोज दी एस एस फाइल राइट स्टाइल्स डॉट सी एस एस दट इट we have the component we have the styles we have linked them both as well uh, let's try to import them now with an app component so what i'll do here is i'll just say loader in fact our uh, our vs code should pick up the component if you just like click on this it will import it uh, automatically like this theek okay? hai i'll take this loader now and i'll just return it like this Now, if you look at our page, we have this loader right here. Okay. Uh, one small change I would like to do here is I want to change the background color of a of a page right now. Let's go to our uh, colorhunt.co. I want something really dark so that it stands out. Probably something in black. This black is neat. Uh, let's try using this. So within a wrap dot CSS, my body color I'll give this. That's better, na? 
ठीक है ना इट लुक्स बेटर सो वी हैव लोडर राइट नाउ बट लोडर अभी नहीं दिखाएंगे विल शो दिस लोडर इफ इट मीट सर्टन कंडीशन ठीक है वॉट एल डू हियर इज दैट स्टेट हियर कॉल्ड एज फॉल्स नो दिस विल बी द लोडिंग स्टेट ठीक है सो आई वॉन्ट टू हैव कॉन्स्ट loading and set loading like this so initially loading will be false because we're not loading anything uh let's say that whenever the loading case is true okay if the loading state is true then i want to return this loader component like return loader like this take okay, a right now we don't see it because it is false but if this is true we see the loader here okay so far everything good guys any questions so far no questions theek hai great abhi kya karte hain ki we'll write a use effect so use effect mein because we make all our api calls in use effect only so on the first render let's write some uh, async Function uh, get users because we can list of users this time, and I'll call this users ka function right here. Uh, within this, we'll do a fetch call. I'll await on it. And the URL for this is uh, yeah this URL. Let's get the response out of this, and and then I'll do await uh, response dot JSON. Cons data is equal to this, and then I'll do a set uh, set users. I need a state for that. Do it, guys. Now, now tell me something. So I want to create a state here to hold all the users' ka list. So I'll say users and set users. Now, but what do you think should be the original state, uh, the initial state here? By the way, it's completely okay if you give like null here. It's completely fine, but <clears throat> let's think about what will eventually be the response of the API. It's an array of objects, right? Yeah, so it's always better to give an empty array to begin with. Okay, what this signifies is okay. So users' ka array initially empty hota hai, but once we get the data, we set the set users to be this data. That's it. Okay. Now the question here is: <clears throat> a loading is still false in the beginning. The mujhe kya karna hai ki before I make the fetch call, just before I make the fetch call, I want to set the loading state to true. Taaki I can show that loading indicator there. And once I have the data, I want to set the loading state to false. Okay. So Just before I make the API call, I want to set the loading state to true, and once I got the response uh, from the API, I want to set the loading state to false. ठीक है? Because once we have the data, loading state की कोई जरूरत नहीं है ना? What we'll do here is I'll do <coughs> set loading of true. So before the API call, I'm setting it as true. and then i come down here it has faults now once we have the data uh, let's just see what is happening right now okay so i'll again i have to like throttle my network i want to reduce the speed of that so i'll do a slow 3g i'll refresh now just hold on you should uh, you should see the loading indicator for a brief second Still loading. Hold on. See, loading. Ho raha hai, ho raha hai, and then done. So once we got the data, we're setting it as false. Now when we set it as false, we have to set the users' ka data as well, which we're setting here. And now let's try to loop over the data, which is this array of objects right here. So what I'll do, uh, what I'll do right now is, yaha par I will uh, within my basic expressions. यहां पर आई टेक यूजर्स डॉट मैप 
take every user and simply just return um, h3 maybe where i want to return the uh, the name let's say so the name will be user dot name okay, very simple so i'm looping on this user scary this is one object and like for them <laughs> this is one object this is one object and so on okay if i expand the first object now this is the first object so is me say i'm getting the name of the user which is this name right here okay now we'll see how this all works out so see, i'm going to refresh the page loading hote hi we see the data so this is perfect this is what you would see in a real world project as well okay you always show a loading indicator in the beginning and then show this thing theek okay? hai okay i'll repeat this all of this again so guys so basically the point here is i want to make an api call to show this list of users uh, but normally in any website if you see you would obviously have like a loading indicator before right because uh, jab wo api call hota hai it might take some time to return the data now uh, while it is uh, making that api call okay uh, we want to show them some loading indicator just to tell the users that something is actually happening behind the scenes like we are making an api call and the data is not ready yet so uske liye we show a loading indicator abhi the point here is i want to show a loading indicator just before we make the fetch call and once we get the data back i want to stop showing loading indicator okay yahan tak is it clear tanzila okay now which part are you exactly confused about pura here okay uh, we'll start from the scratch again see uh, if i remove all of this now okay uh, we'll start from scratch see, first of all ask yourself like uh, what api are we calling we're calling this api and what is this returning it's returning an array of objects okay so i'll take this api endpoint and um where do we make the actual api call within react components where do we actually make the api call do we directly make it right here or within something else I there Tanzila I think uh, you again have network issue I think Guys can you all hear me I also had some network issue. Okay, uh, I hope you can see me now, guys. Ah, uh, is Tanzila there? She doesn't seem to be there. No problem. I will repeat. Karunga. Okay. Uh, others, if you still have questions, please ask me. Okay. Uh, now the point here is. I want to make an API call to this API. I want to show a list of users that are there in this API response. Okay. 
Uh, my first question to all of you is, uh, where do I make the API call? Inside use effect, right? OK, very good. So I'll use my use effect here. And within this, uh, what should be the what should be the second argument, guys, in pair use effect? An empty array because we want to make this API call only once after the first render. Okay. Uh, within this use effect right now, I want to write my fetch call. Now I can either use async await, I can use a normal function, I can use an iffy. Okay. Uh, let's use a simple iffy for now. I'll create a very simple iffy like this. And there should be an, an async function. Uh, guys, one second, hold on, please. Hello, guys. Uh, I will have to unfortunately stop the class right now. I have some emergency at home. Uh, but I will clear this up tomorrow. OK, uh, the first thing I'll start off tomorrow with is the same example again. Okay? So I hope you guys are OK with that. Uh, really sorry. I have some emergency. I have to <clears throat> like go quickly. Uh, but yes, we'll cover this tomorrow. OK, guys? Thank you so much. And take care. Good night. Bye-bye.